Brother Ben here. Brother Ben. Now, Ben got a heck of a program. A lot of people listening to Brother Ben. And Ben tells them about the minister. And Ben tells them about the minister. Peace, family, in the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful. I bear witness there is no God but Allah. And Muhammad is his messenger. I'd like to greet you all with the greedy words of peace. We say it in the Arabic language of Assalamu Alaikum. All right, all right, all right. Sorry for the confusion this morning. I knew last night we was going to start at 7, but I, I guess I, I didn't publish it. Or I thought that I changed it inside of the app. But we are here now, and what we're going to be watching isn't going to be that long anyway. It's probably going to be one of our shorter lectures. So what we're going to do, we're going to listen to the first part of Brother Neary and Brother Nick Cannon talk about Operation Black Man. Very powerful interview. A uh, lot of great feedback so far, so we're going to watch that. And if you're new, what we do, we're going to watch it, and then we're going to give our feedback at the end. Okay, we're going to give our feedback at the end, so make sure you take some notes and write down some things that stands out for you so that you may have something to share at the end. We are still ending before 8 o'clock, so we will have, Sister Randisha, a three-minute feedback timer, three-minute feedback timer today because we do still at the end at 8. All right, let's get to it so we don't waste no time. A privilege and a pleasure once again uh, to be in the presence of a safe space, a brave place uh, for men to heal, feel, uh, and and honestly, we we're not canceling. We are counseling on council culture, and today I'm truly honored uh, to be in the presence of the highest class of civilization. I mean, this brother is the author of multiple books, seven books, three of which uh, top sellers on Amazon's bestsellers list. Um, and I mean, so much wisdom. Uh, I'm, I'm ready for this class because I'm in the presence of a student minister of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, author, activist, mentor, life coach, and entrepreneur, Brother Nori Muhammad. Man, Brother Nick, it's my honor to share space and time with you, Mighty Warrior. Man, I, I you, you know I'm a great fan. Um, and and student man, I mean you you've been dropping wisdom for a while now, uh, and honestly, I think where we are here, one of the reasons why I even you know built this platform is, you know, we need help, you yeah. know, specifically uh, as black men in general. I'm calling this one Operation Black Man. Right, we, we you know uh, we need rescuing, yeah. uh, specifically, man. I, and I, I, there's so many topics that I want to dive into. Um, one to get to know yourself a little bit better, introducing to the audience those who may not be familiar with you. But then, uh, I mean, even if we go and start off with a framing question, I, I'm, I'll personalize it, man. I mean, I mean, I, I need some fixing, man. I, I, uh, there's so much going on in the world. I mean, it's it's constantly we're bombarded with so much information. We're bombarded with so much, you know energy, some low frequency, mm -hmm. some high frequency, and and it's just trying to navigate through it all, man. man. Yeah, how, how can you fix me, man? I need some advice. No, I'm on your, I'm on your couch today, No, man. no. <laughs> I'm a, let me say something to you, Brother Nick, and I, and I know I speak on behalf of conscious people and people of goodwill of this nation and the world. We, are, we, are, we watch you and we admire your resilience, mm. your fight, your drive, your focus, your self-discipline. Um, and you, you have been a great example of navigating through the struggles and the storms of life and coming out and remaining your authentic you. Man, I appreciate that. That so, means a lot coming from you. That, that's my counsel. Yeah, yeah there it is. What, that's all I need. Yeah, doing. Yeah. But it is, you know, the beauty of, of, of you is that you are here. Mm. Uh, when it comes to operation on black man, yeah. Right now, there are more black males born than there are black females. Mm. But by the time the two reach the age 18, black females outnumber black males seven to one. Wow. Th that means that we're dying at the rate of an endangered species. 
So they got organizations and programs for the koala bear, for the bald eagle, for the blue whale, the white tiger, but what's there for the black man? Mm. So to have this discussion uh, hopefully will help us to, to look at it because what is causing us to be eliminated from the face of the earth is it, it's homicide, mm. it's suicide, it's life imprisonment. And, and those kind of uh, conversations and fixing those problems will help us to stay on the scene so that we can escape being an endangered species. Man, and one of the beautiful things that I've always admired about the nation is that you all have taken on that mission with great seriousness. Like yeah. you're not like saving us for 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 decades. I mean, and and it it doesn't go unnoticed from you know our brothers that are incarcerated yes, uh, and they and they come out changed yeah. uh, for you know people who are on the front line, showing up at every time um, and showing not only that you care, that you're there to protect, that you're there to provide, but then you offer a tutelage, uh, a way of life, a discipline right. that, you know, brothers are susceptible to. I mean, brothers are really gravitating towards, right. you know, it, it's yeah. street cats yeah, that, right. that, that, that change their lives and, and go on to be great leaders of their family. I mean, what what do you believe that is? I mean, even with your own background, I mean, maybe where you started from and, and, and the man that you are today, how has these teachings, these disciplines, and this philosophy helped you uh, become the man that you are? Well, you know, the, the reality is that th there's a verse in the Bible that says this, in Malachi 3 and 6, it says, I'm the Lord, I do not change. Mm. This means that God has a pattern of doing things, it has a methodology. And when you unpack the Bible and the Quran, whatever sacred text you read, anytime that a people are in a mess, he gives them a messenger. Mm. When a people are warring with themselves, he raises a warner from among them. Mm. When a people are in a crisis, then Christ is. When they got problems, then a prophet arises. Mm. That's the mathematics of God. That's the way he works. Mm -hmm. so, so when you look at the people of the past, 5,000 years ago, Abraham, idol worshipers. Mm. 1,400 years ago, uh, uh, disrespecters of their women, intoxicants in Arabia. Mm. During the time of Jesus, they were bound by, by psychological uh, oppression, being bound to rituals and laws, but not being true to themselves. During the time of Moses, it was slavery. Mm. So Noah, they was fighting and killing each other uh, right. in the Mesopotamia. So when you look at all the conditions that all of the people had that brought birth to their prophets and their messengers, we have all of those conditions as a people at the same time as some new ones. Right. So we, we, uh, we deserved right. intervention from, from God, and, and he gave us that, we believe, in the person of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. These become uh, our men and women that come to give us our, our men to give us our way of devotion. Right, right. So that, that we can have a specific, specific tailor-made spiritual system that fits the time and get the results that others have gotten. And that's what has happened from our being committed to the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Right. Uh, and, and like you said, no one can ever dispute. We in the people business and the highest transformation rate of any group of people on another person mm. is, is from those that have been touched by the teachings of the Nation of Islam. Beautiful. So a little bit about yourself. I mean, how did you get to this space? What, when, where did, where does the, I mean, I, I know what, what, what happened was, yeah, 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 like, well, it, you know, I was, when I was young, coming up, I was in the streets to the neighborhood I grew up in, that's all everybody did was sell dope. Mm -hmm. So I was selling weed, 11 and 12, powder cocaine, 15, 16 years old. Right. And, and me and my partner, we were, I mean, we were doing well in the sense of streets. Mm. But one day, I, but Nick, I was sitting on the porch and a voice came in my head and we were doing at that time. This is doing the powder cocaine when people had to cook their own dope, make it crack. We was doing a half ounce a day on the weekdays and an ounce on the weekends. Mm. So we was making back back in ninety, right, right, three to five thousand dollars a week at fifteen years old. Wow. So that you know we was doing doing what we was doing for, for teenagers, absolutely. Yeah. And it wasn't no cell phones, no. It was, it was all yeah. pagers back then. Right, right. But so I was sitting on the porch one day and a thought came to my mind. I said, I wonder what the dope fiends were doing when they were my age. Mm. And I said, you know what? Instead of, I'm turning off all these pages 
instead of going to serve anybody, I'm just going to go to the liquor store, trap house, the alley, everywhere we serve, and I'm just going to interview everybody that's, that we serve. Mm. And as I started interviewing them, Brother Nick, it blew my mind. I said, Brother, I'm going to ask you, what was you doing when you was my age? And the universal answer was, oh, we was getting money just like you. I said, well, just getting money just like me, talking about cutting grass, painting <laughs> houses? He said, no, we was hustling. I said, so you telling me that you used to sell dope and now you own it? Wow. And it dawned on me that if I'm doing what they were doing when I'm their age, then I'm en route to be doing what they're doing when I become their age. Right. And uh, I said, I got to renegotiate my contract with life. Yeah. And so I start going to church trying to get it right. But anybody that's ever been in the streets knows it's just as hard to stop selling as it is to stop using. Mm. One's a fiend for the dope, but the other's a fiend for the money. For the dollar. you can get from with, yeah. the, with the money. So I was a fiend yeah. and didn't know it. So I didn't feel like I was getting a, the strength to resist the pull of the streets. And a young sister that was I went to school with was my girlfriend. She gave me a book, Message to the Black Man, Two mm. Tapes by the Minister. Right. And I never listened to it or read it, but one day I decided this church ain't work. I'm going to do it. Right. And I said, this is how I've been believing all of my life. Right. And uh, I looked from the outside looking in. I said, man, this looks... This looks a little too disciplined for me. <laughs> yeah. I said, so if I can't prove it, if I can prove it wrong, I'ma leave it alone. Mm. But if I can't, I'ma commit myself 100%. Wow. But well, here I am, suited and booted. Yeah. So I put in eight hours a day yeah. trying to prove it wrong, and my argument was defeated in five minutes wow. by the little brother on the doorpost mm. at the mosque. So I said, all right, yeah. and I submitted, and uh, I came in the ranks at 17, mm. and uh, two weeks later. The sister that gave me that book and tapes, she came in the ranks two weeks later. Oh, wow. We got married a year and a half later at 19. Wow. And God willing, if we make it July 5th, we'd be 30 years wow. married. Wow. Congratulations. Yeah. Success. True yes, success. Sir. Yes, sir. That's a beautiful story. And, I, and, and it intrigues me. I mean, I'm, I'm sure even a lot of people out here watching um, and listening, if one wanted to, to join, and be a part of the Nation of Islam. What are the requirements? Because from the outside looking in, yeah. it seems extremely disciplined. We know all uh, the stereotypes, you know <laughs> right, what I mean? Right. You get no pork, no white women, you know what I mean? <laughs> right, like, right. we know the, the uh, everything we done seen in the movies, everything that the, it just seems, it's, one would be intimidated. Right. You know, because when you see the brothers, they yeah. so pristine, they so sharp, they, the intellect is so high that you're like, man, I, I can't handle that. It's, it's easier to go to church. It's easier to watch a podcast or listen than to step in. So one, in the, in the practical sense, how would one join? And then two, like, what does it take for an individual young man who is at his, at, at his last wits, it, it, yeah. at the bottom, but needs some saving, needs, so something, some discipline. Yeah. How? What does he need to to bring to the table? Well, it's you know we you know we have a saying: come as you are. You just can't stay as you are. Mm. And that, what what we have found is that there's certain things knowledge won't let you do. Mm. So anytime that that in life someone is struggling with doing something good for them, that is hard. All they have to do is stack up enough evidence on the benefits of it, and it makes it easier to do. Mm. If you're doing something wrong or bad that is easy for you to do and you're having a hard time stopping, all you got to do is find out how much negative is in it and how much it's going to hurt you. Mm. And, and, and as you get ready to participate in whatever wrong you want to do, you start being haunted by your own thoughts, and mm. the evidence shows up, and it makes it easier for you to resist the evil. On the flip side, do the good. So what happens in the teachings... We just ask you, come and listen, don't commit. Just mm. come here. Mm. And, and inside of knowledge is evidence. And inside of evidence is conviction. And conviction allows your mind to throw your whole self at what you've learned. So the process becomes a lot easier just whenever you start, start feeding your mind on the supreme wisdom that, that we have to offer. So it's, it's not... Uh, don't look at it from the outside in and think it's that challenging. Know this, that every, everybody in came from somewhere just like where you are. So if they can do it, so, so can you. You just use your spirit, spiritual peripheral vision. And uh, as you are moving through the process of trying to become the best version of yourself, 
it helps when you got other soldiers with you mm -hmm. striving to do the same thing. Right. And you know, there's a there's a saying by Prophet Muhammad. He said that the only knowledge that man keeps is the knowledge that man shares. Mm. So what ends up happening is because this is a mission, resurrection of our people, restoration of our people. So as you go out and you are sharing that knowledge, it helps it to stay in you better. And you you have such a sense of purpose that it's, it's not as hard as it might look from the outside in. So as a brother just could, could walk up to, to a mosque and, and just yep. say, I, I just wanna listen, I just wanna just learn. Come, just coming, coming to learn. Come, I'm coming to listen, I'm coming to learn. And because as you said, um, you know, the, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad told us, he said, every time you look at a black man, you're looking at God. Mm. So serving the black man to us is serving God. Mm. Looking out for you is looking out for God. Mm. Caring for you is caring for God. So, so as a general theme, the kind of love that you're going to meet when you meet a brother, he's going to take you under his wing and try to coach you along. And, and because... You know, there's a saying the Honorable Elijah Muhammad gave us. He said, find new people's associates immediately. And how do you find them? Find somebody that's struggling, that has overcome what somebody's struggling with. Mm -hmm. You show up and you struggling with, with womanizing, you struggling with, with heroin, you struggling with poverty, whatever it is. Well, we got a soldier right here that came from that same side of town that overcame heroin, that overcame this, and we linked them up. Mm. And now the brother can speak his language. He's on his frequency. Right. With the truth. Right. And letting you know, this is what I had to do. This is some of the tips that I had to employ. And the next thing you know, you got a strong soldier. Man, I'm glad you said that because the, the truth is what I want to dive into, you know, for in, in this operation. And it feels like the energy of the truth right now, the, is the, the truth is the word of the year. You know yeah. what I mean? Uh, and what I've, always admired and respected and even, you know, uh, Minister Farrakhan even shared this with me personally, is the one thing about the truth, you don't have to defend it, it defends itself. Yeah. Um, and what I've always admired is whatever the, the teaching, the philosophy, even as we sit here, you're, you're quoting the Bible, you know what I mean? That, any anything that is the truth, right. that you all embrace it, That's right. you speak it, you don't run from it. Mm -hmm. uh, what is it? Why are people so afraid of what the truth is? And then how? Like, I think I think my my overall question is when in dealing with this because I want to dive into the truth even more. But isn't like, like if if we're all speaking the truth of God, and yeah. we're all really wanting the same thing. Yeah. Why is it so difficult for different ideologies and philosophies to get along? Because ultimately we're all seeking the same truth. You teach it. But <laughs> so what came to my mind as you said that is spiritual maturity. Mm. See, when you are spiritually mature, you can you can you respect the truth wherever the truth comes from. Mm. So most of us, we are we are engaged in religion, but we are religious gangbanging. Mm. and spiritual set tripping. Mm. It's either you are with my denomination or you're going to hell. But, but, but the fact, the, the truth is that even the term denomination mm. is anti-God. Yep. And, and most people don't want to accept it, but God is bigger than your church. Mm. He's bigger than your mosque. He's bigger than your, than your denomination. Matter of fact, he's bigger than your religion. Right. Denomination, the prefix D means to divide. Mm. Nami in Latin means name and a nation. So denomination is dividing up a nation with a name. Mm. And we we seen that in the great writing of Willie Lynch. Yeah. He was hired in 1712 to be a business consultant to the slave traders in America. Mm -hmm. And he said, he said, General, I got a foolproof plan <laughs> right. that if you employ one year to be successful for 300 years, he said, all I've done is I've taken and outlined a number of differences among the slaves and I make them bigger than what they really are. Mm. And he named 11 different things, age, color, size, size of plantation, status, coarse hair, straight hair, 11. And he said, 11 of these will make them perpetually disunited and disagreeable with themselves for 300 years, maybe even a thousand. Mm. 
Yeah, and that story was revealed to us in the seventies, and it still feels like we haven't grasped that. We concept. haven't broken. We haven't broken it. If that, if it's, if it's shown to us that it's look, here's how they will divide yeah. you. Yeah. But even like you said, even outside of our culture, we see it in great philosophers, great men of God. They yeah. still can't. If, if it's all the the same truth, right? Uh. Wars have been fought over this. Well, no one has a monopoly on truth. Mm. So, so now you got. So now here you have black people. Willie Lynch is saying I can make them disunited, disagreeable, and enemies of each other, self refuel and self perpetuate. You don't have to do nothing no more. They'll mess themselves up mm. with these eleven for three hundred years. Well, that would have been over in 2012, but we, here we are in 2024, and we still operating under the same map. So what have they done? They've allowed new differences, new labels that are really unnatural yeah. to, to, to create us into a perpetual cycle of disagreement. So now we are not just old versus young, male versus female, small plantation and all with other. Now we Democrat, we Republican. Right. Now we Kappa, we Q. Now we uh -huh. Baptist, Methodist, Episcopalian, right. Church of God in Christ, we Sunni, we Shia. We it's all these new labels. Mm. They're really sub labels that are subordinate to the real label we are that you find in Psalms A two six. Mm. Ye are all God's children of the Most High God. So because uh, we in the in the nation and we in Islam take a cosmopolitan approach toward religion and not, you know, cosmopolitan for those in the view and audience. I'm not talking about the little naked white women on the magazine. <laughs> right, right. Cosmopolitan right. means universal. Yeah. We believe in all the messengers, yeah. all the prophets, all of the revealed word that came from all of them. And we make no dis distinctions among any of them. So we respect the Torah like we do the gospel, the gospel like we do the Quran and the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. We see all of that as divine wisdom and truth. Mm. That's how you should be when you have spiritual maturity. Right. But unfortunately, uh, a lot of our people don't. And I, I, I tell a story whenever I've been blessed to speak in a church. I said there was a man drowning in the river one day, and a Muslim and a Christian and a Jew showed up to save him. Mm. The Christian threw his rope out, and it was too short to save the man. Mm. Then here comes the Jew. He throws his rope out. It's too short to save the man. The Muslim throws his rope out. It's too short to save the man. Now, they got one or two options. Either they're going to stand on the bank of the river and argue over whose rope is the best, mm. or they're going to use some common sense and tie all three ropes together and save that man. Mm. So we at a stage right now where, where playing word gymnastics and spiritual pontificating and religious game banging and spiritual set tripping has to come to an end. Our people are dying in the streets. Mm. We got to tie all the ropes together. Tie it together. So truth is truth. Man, it's so powerful. You says you say so much. You 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 teach him right now, uh, and then almost even to the space of like, you know, Carter G. Woodson with the miseducation of the Negro mm -hmm. really says like we've we've been programmed, and you know to to almost accept that we are, are lesser than, and even even in our understanding. Yeah. Uh, even with the backdoor mentality, yep, you yep. know, you, you, you created backdoor. If we don't find if one. If we don't find one, we will create one. That's what he said. And it feels like that's exactly where everything is, specifically even in media, when speaking of the truth, because the truth is so apparent. But, and I want you to teach on this to where there's the truth, mm -hmm. and then there's their truth or a person. Like it's almost like people rather. I I want to I want to project or pontificate my truth yeah. opposed to the truth because like you said there's no monopoly on the truth we all yeah. can operate in that but it feels like today specifically in media that everybody we're about exposing one another yeah. or talk you were talking down on someone else but I have to speak my truth yeah. or I have no yeah. problem operating in a lower frequency because this is my, my truth. truth yeah yeah uh I mean how does one know the difference? Because people are now mistaking the truth with my truth. Yeah, well, that's deep. And unfortunately, uh, no one has a particular brand of truth. Truth is its own brand. Right. So you can't have a my truth and your truth. Truth is truth. Mm. But there, there in the Bible, there's a, a verse where God tells in Isaiah 55, he says, my thoughts are not your thoughts. Mm. My ways are not your ways. As far as the heaven is from the earth, 
is as far as my thoughts and ways are from your thoughts and ways. Well, the, the diameter of the universe is 76 quintillion miles, so teaches the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. That's long. Mm. But he's saying that the man's knowledge is that far away from his knowledge. Mm. Man's way of doing things is that far away from the way he does things. Mm. So then he follows it up with this. He says, look, so lean not. On, your own on thine own. own understanding. So, 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 where's <laughs> you, so whose truth do you have? Right. If I'm, so if, I, if you're saying my truth, you're saying I'm leaning... So lean not on thine own understanding, but in all thine ways acknowledge him, and he will direct your path and show you the way. Yeah. So, so mathematically speaking, what the God is saying, see, if you're leaning on something, you mm -hmm. want it to support you. Right. What he's saying is that your own understanding does not have the authority nor the approval to support you long term. Mm. So there's another verse. So he says, bring every thought captive unto Christ. Mm. So whatever you're thinking on any given subject, our mindset should be, let me compare it to revelation. Let mm. me compare it to what God said on the subject. And if I take what I'm thinking and compare it to what God said, and it matches, I can keep it. But if I take it and compare it and it does not match, I got to kill it. Mm. And if we did that with, uh, with every subject of life, mm -hmm. then, then we would be able to say that we have let this mind be in you. Wow. The same mind that was in Christ Jesus. And since as a man thinketh so he do. in his heart, so is he. And Christ yeah. had the mind of God. If yeah. you think like Christ and he thought like God, and now you have the mind of God, and as a man thinketh, now you are God. Yeah. And what can a God do? So that's, that's the math that should be employed to help shake that my truth versus the truth. Man, that, that's so powerful and so much wisdom. And then the way you break it down, it, it, it's very difficult to combat that. Um, and you and you break it down so well in the mathematics of the mind, and we yes, we're definitely gonna dive into the latest book. But I, I I love how I feel like in this first session we just scratched the surface, and and you yes, already sir. you know blessed us with so much wisdom. But you know for all the young brothers and sisters who who are checking this out for the first time, and knowing that you know we're, we're gonna get an opportunity to unpack more. Um, and you know, I know the comments are gonna be going crazy. And uh, <laughs> I wanna know what would your message be, you know, initially for that hungry mind, for that thirsty soul out there that is really looking for that rescuing uh, yeah. in, that, in that sense. Well, you know, as you said earlier and we talked, the we are not the proud, powerful, pious, or productive people we once were mm. before we were kidnapped and Caucasianized and Westernized by our enemy. Mm -hmm. That's the facts. We built Timbuktu, the city of Atlantis, the Nile Valley civilization. We are the fathers and mothers of all art, science, and civilization. Mm. We've been in existence for trillions of years, and everything that's under the sun, we are the originators of it. But look at the state we are in right now. So anytime that you want to be restored, or to return back to your original sense. There's three things you need for restoration. Number one, you need a prototype. Mm -hmm. Number two, you need a process. Mm -hmm. And number three, you need proof that the process works. So phase one is to know that if every time you look at a black man, you're looking at God, that's mm -hmm. the honor of Elijah Muhammad. It's said different by David in Psalms, ye are all God's children of the most high God. A little different in Genesis that you created in the image and the likeness of God, that means everything that's true about God is true about you. Image and likeness means you're not a duplicate, right. you're a replica. A replica can look like, mm -hmm. but a replica, a duplicate can look like, but a replica has the power and function of what it's a copy of. Mm. That's what we are. So we are, we are born with that potential. So phase one of the process is the acquisition of a knowledge of self. Mm. I would encourage any young brother or sister to, to begin to baptize your mind into the rich knowledge of people that look like you that accomplished great feats in the past. Then after that, get into scripture and know that everything you read about God is a part of you mm. and accept that as a knowledge of self. And if we did that, um, we would have a greater expectation of ourselves. We would have confidence in ourselves that would ultimately lead to Godfidence. Mm in ourselves when we really learn about those that look like us that were divine, including the Supreme Being himself. 
that would give us a certain level of power. And, and to prove the point, there was in 2012, there was a, a study that, that you can look it up online. It's called the Obama effect. Mm -hmm. And in Harlem, they had a group of high school students that before he became president, took a test, 80% of them failed. Mm. They just said, let's do an experiment. Let's see what happens after Obama becomes president. Don't give them no new tutor, no knowledge, nothing. Don't teach them nothing. Let them take the same test. After he became president, they took the test with no new knowledge and 80% failed before, 80% passed with flying colors. Wow. What does it show? It showed that there was nothing wrong with their minds and their intelligence. It was something wrong with their confidence. Mm. But because they seen someone that looked like them, that accomplished a great feat in their immediate past, they in their mind activated that spiritual peripheral vision. If he can do that, I can master this. I said, man, if that could happen, we'll learn about one black man that became a president how much more power would it be to learn about Shaka Zulu mm. and Nefertiti, Mansa Queen Musa. Nzinga, Mansa Musa, <laughs> Mhotep, yeah. the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, Garvey? Yeah. How much power could you put? See, see that kind of confidence allows you to be able to operate in a in a different mind. But it comes with that knowledge of self. Knowledge of self. That knowledge of self. So we have to uh, to dive into it. That's why. If you look at the way black and white children start school, I'm talking about the preschool age. We, we, babies start school the same way. Very timid, very scared. But if you notice how the white and the black child, as they matriculate through 12 years of, of education inside of that system, they learn about Thomas Jefferson, a white man. Plato, Aristotle, Socrates, Thales, Hypothagoras, white man. Einstein, white man. Right. So the black and white child, the white child, every time he learns about somebody that looked like him that accomplished great feet in the past, his shoulders began to get straighter. Right. His back is straight. He, now, now he's And by the time he gets to 12, he walks out with confidence, ready to conquer the known world. Mm. But because we didn't learn nothing about people that look like us that mm. accomplished great feats in the past, we, we leave and our head's still down and our pants is down now too. Wow. But if you can take that baby, mm. and let's say we get them on that inf Nefertiti, that Shaka Zulu. Yeah. See, let's get on the knowledge of people that look like him or her that accomplished great feats in the past, then we too could have that. And that's why the father, one of the fathers of Western education, his name was Robert Collier in 1926. He, he said this, he said, education is only three-fourths or one-fourth knowledge, and the other three-fourths is encouragement. Mm. And nothing encourages a child like seeing someone that looked like them accomplish great feats in the past. So right. that's phase one to get that restoration where we can go back into being the prototype we're supposed to be. Man, that's beautiful. And phase one, that's a perfect place to uh, take a pause and, and wrap this first session up, man. I mean, so awesome. much wisdom. Thank you, sir. So I'm many gems. To uh, absolutely. And you know, the, the, the mathematics of the mind, get it now. I mean, <laughs> we're gonna sir. dig yes. into this in our second session. We I wanna I wanna talk um relationships. Yes, sir. I wanna talk, you know, uh health, mental health as well as you know, health and wellness in general. So we, we got a few more sessions uh in, in the honor and privilege to be in your pre uh in your presence, man. Mine, so. brother Nick, mine. All right, brothers and sisters, that is part one. If you have anything that you would like to share, go ahead and press the number three at this time. Go ahead and press the number three. Man, some good news, good news, good game for the black man. Operation Black Man, Brother Nuri Muhammad, and Brother Nick Cannon. All right, let's go to Sister TT up first. Can y'all hear me? Loud and clear. Um, what stood out was the fact that he said that you always got to be yourself. Self, you know, learn about self first. And then everything else will fall into place. Um, he said some powerful things on there that relate to self and, 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 and how, um, we as a people need to learn about ourselves 
and how we how we need to get together and and organize and and unify with one another and 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 how and how we need more of our people you know to to be able to relate to you know to various different things like he said about the school how how they talked about Thomas Jefferson and all that and that was a powerful statement where he said how much more greater we would be if we learned about our people and the accomplishments of our people. That's what I took away from it. Mm. Yes, ma'am. One of the, one of the things that first stands out for me from this is when he says there are certain things that knowledge won't let you do. He said, all you have to do is stack up enough evidence for the reason to do something or not do something. And then it just makes it it makes it harder for you to commit something basically uh, that may be harmful to you, that may not be as good for you when you stack up enough evidence that you shouldn't do it. And it makes me think about, you know, the scripture obviously says um, uh, we are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. And we, we just got to think about what type of knowledge we are going out there to get and what am I struggling with? Because I can have knowledge of, I can have economic knowledge, I can have, you know, certain knowledge about maybe what I went to school for, but when it comes to something that I'm striving to accomplish in my life, am I going to acquire the knowledge that gives me the strength to keep going, the will, the desire to keep going? Because that's literally the formula. If you have enough evidence, if you have enough pull on your mind, enough pull on your will in one direction over the other, you do it. This is why some things we are willing to strive to overcome. And there's other things that maybe seem to be newer to us that we've had, that we haven't had any experience with, that we haven't had any results with. We're, we're, we're willing to stop or not go the extra mile like we would something else. So what knowledge are we acquiring? And whenever we think about our young people, or we think about something who someone who isn't on the path instead of judging them if we know this to be the formula hey man it is the knowledge and there's certain things certain things knowledge won't let you do and he's given us the formula on how to hey man let's stack up the evidence on how you can make this happen it's not condemning a person as you know per se that's going to get them to change it's giving them the right knowledge that they can they can look that they can go into their file cabinet and see that there's another way of doing something. Because sometimes we judge a people or we judge a person and we thinking that, oh, this person is just bad, or maybe they just grew up in a circumstance where that was the only way they knew how to respond. That was the only that was the only example they had of how to handle certain things. But if they had enough knowledge, enough evidence, enough examples on another way to do it. I think they probably would at least try the other way, which is what I believe the Honorable Elijah Muhammad meant when it, it said, you never have to condemn a dirty glass, just put a clean one next to it. It's like basketball. I done, been, I done made so many shots in practice that there's enough evidence, there's enough evidence stacked up that in the game, when it's time to shoot the ball on the line, I'm willing to shoot it. Because there's enough evidence that I've seen myself by myself that I can get it done. Which also makes me think about what our goals, man. There's big goals that we have. There's visions that we have. But there's little small goals that we should be focused on that gives us enough evidence of the God within. See, some of us have never taking the leap. Some of us have never really tried to God within. Some of us ain't tried now, God. We have depended on other people. We have depended on just being complacent, just being safe, and we're never taking a risk. And when you find out that, man, I can take a risk and then I can win. Oh, I can depend on myself and I can win. I can, I can step out there on what I believe I'm able and capable of doing and I can win. When those big things come up in our life, we have enough evidence that's stacked up of me winning. I got enough evidence stacked up against me that I can be successful and I can overcome any obstacle in my way. Oh man, shoot, I can I can take on them big, them, them, them big visions, that big vision. Uh, a lot easier because of the evidence. So stack up the evidence 
about yourself, not just about everybody else. Yeah, we got evidence of who the minister is. We got evidence of who the Honorable Elijah Muhammad is. We got evidence of Master Father Muhammad and Noble Drew Ali and Marcus. But what about the evidence of self? What about the greatness of ourselves? Let's stack that up too. All right, let's go to another Kobe. Oh, that's Sister TT. I'm thinking that's Sister Randy and uh, brother, uh, brother Remus. You another Kobe? You I, I gotta figure out what you mean. <laughs> Salaam alaikum, family. Good morning. Alaikum salam. Uh, thank you, brother Ben, for bringing brother Nuri to the table. Um, <clears throat> amazing. Uh, listening to him, learning more about his story. I've heard his story quite a bit, being in the nation and watching his growth. And it's interesting how with Nick Cannon, um, brother brother Nuri was out here recently, um, in LA. I was blessed to be able to after Savings Day he came through, was able to pick up his book. And um, it's just great to be around that mind because you're looking at a student that has been through the process. And I love how Nick Cannon, because Nick Cannon, you know, was Minister Abdul Malik out here, you know, uh, in L.A., having a good effect. And Brother Nuri's story being tied to him and from the streets and that relating to the influence of Brother Abdul Malik and how he met with Nick Cannon. And they talked and stuff. Nick Cannon, by the way, just short shout out to him for being somewhat open to the conversation, I think about Arsenio Hall back in the day, that uh, they got rid of him off the, but Nick Cannon and Infant Sunshine and said, any, any of these individuals that are well-known out there, you know, that's something special about an individual that's willing to do what he's doing, just have an interview, have a conversation like this, and shout out to him on that. And um, But he asked the question of, what makes y'all different? And and uh, I love Brother Nuri's answer about Willie Lynch and all that. But see, we have what's called student enrollment in actual facts. When you come through the process in the nation of Islam, you get some of this evidence. If you don't have the basics of it, that's why I, I point so much to the message to the black man, because the chapters in there we don't learn about in life and the school system. And, and we don't understand Allah is God, the original man. These are sections in this book, Islam, learning about the Bible and the Holy Quran, you know, look, learning about the devil, learning about, prayer service, learning about the program and position, um, learning about the economic program, learning about the, the persecution of the righteous. You're going to be persecuted when you come into this work. You, you, you find all of the support around these topics and the land of our own qualifications amongst other things. So without that working knowledge, you don't have enough to kind of like start getting your own evidence. Everybody in the nation has that foundational piece. That's message to the black man. That's kind of a broad digging in a little bit, but you get the actual facts and, you know, talking about the, he talked about the the diameter of the universe. He talked about, you know, um, how much does the earth weigh, student enrollment, these questions, everybody in the nation has that. And once you start to hear it, now you can start to get the evidence for it. And that right there separates you out of this, this white supremacist mindset that we all caught in and, and trying to navigate and understand everything starts to make sense. Even what's going on in in, um, in Israel, in Yahoo, everything starts to make sense when you have enough foundational information so you can go find the evidence to back it up in, in life. Just want to drop it right there. I appreciate you, brother. Yes, sir. Thank you for sharing, Brother Remus. Let's go to... Uh, na, 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 na. Brother Daniel 6 Yes, sir. Um... I was looking at when he spoke about putting all the thoughts under the captivity of God and also what you meant to develop our thoughts that show how the negative of something that gives us enough reason to stop and the positive of something gives enough reason to do the right thing and or stop those bad things. And I'm going to tie that in when he said that we have to have three things, prototype, a process, and we have to have proof. That just makes me think about what we are taught. The knowledge of God is the knowledge of self, and the knowledge of self is the knowledge of God. And we have been given this knowledge, but we've been given two men that live the exact knowledge of God and self. So we have the prototype, we have the process, and we have the proof. Now we are told by Jesus, if any man would be my disciple, he must first deny himself. I have to deny all of that which goes against that process, that prototype and that proof. I have to deny that which goes against 
the negativity that would not allow me to be successful. And I have to accept the positivity. And then I have to pick up my cross, deny myself and follow after one who is in front that's showing me how to manifest the best in me. So I'm reminded of when he said that uh, our brother spoke about how do you know which truth is the truth? He first said truth is truth, number one. And the only way to discern what you believe to be the truth and what is the truth is to look at what God says about that situation, what God says about their circumstances, what God says about their truth. So we have knowledge of God. We have knowledge of self. And we have knowledge of that enemy who put us in that willingness condition where we are still right now. Even in the teachings, reverberating around, not manifesting the God within. I remember the minister said, it's not long, how long you've been around the water. It's how much you have drank. So, you know, me or any one of us can boast about being around the water and spitting the wisdom. But what have I manifested in my personal life to really show that I have a working relationship with the God and I'm actually transforming myself. And I would just close with, that's where I'm at in my Islam right now. And it's a hard, arduous, difficult walk, but it is one that's really, really worth it because once I establish that truth within me, I, I, I get a everlasting peace. Thank you. Yes, sir. Sister Yolanda. Assalamualaikum. Um, in this resurrection, the minister Nori mentioned how, well, no, Nick, Tank, Nick Cannon asked the question, so how do we get into this? How do we come? I'm paraphrasing. That's not exactly what he said. In coming, just walk through the door. As I mentioned it in the chat, people don't go to the hospital because they feeling good. People go to the hospital because they sick. They searching for a way to help themselves get better. So just as we come into the nation, come as you are. You went to the hospital as you were. You were sick. You went to the hospital. You came as you are. When you come out of the hospital, the doctor's office, whatever medical facility, are you still in the same condition? Mm. Are you still in the same condition once they give you whatever they give you to get you back to where you would like to be? So just as I came through the nation doors, without a shadow of my doubt, it didn't, I didn't have the question. I didn't have to hear nobody speak. Just sign me up. Because I want a new, di a different direction in my life. The way I've been doing it, ain't working. So applying these principles a little bit at a time, applying the principles, practical application is key. And someone had mentioned in the uh, chat that about the programming, we refuse to believe we have been programmed because we don't understand. And I need to get the book, The Mathematical Mind that Minister Nori wrote. We don't understand how what we allow to go through our ears, what we allow ourselves to see how it feeds our subconscious. Uh, Minister Dr. Ava, may Allah be pleased with her, her book, she really talks about that in Naturally Beautiful. And it's another book we read. We have to understand our body is a one big organism. And it, know how, it knows how to handle itself as long as you feed it the proper things. Feeding it the proper things. The time of our salvation has arrived. That's what our lecture was last night in, at the mosque meeting. The time of our salvation has arrived. So which program are we going to choose? Whose program are we going to follow? I want to follow the program of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad given to him by the God that came in the person of Master Fad Muhammad. Practical application is key. And it's, it's, it took 400 years to make us a slave, right? So we ain't going to come into the teachings and we're going to be changed overnight. I sound like him. Wa alaykum salam. Sister Dr. K. Um, 
Assalamu alaikum. Um, so um, what stood out to me was um, the one thing I love about Brother Nuri, the minister, all all of the student, all of the student minister and the minister is how they present the information to to people. You know, and Nick was asking about, um, you know, a lot of times people look at the nation from the outside and they know, oh man, I love how the brothers are carrying themselves, but they always feel like, but I'm not ready. I I don't know if I can do that, you know. And I love how uh, Nuri. Brother Nuri said to him, when you come into the nation, they connect you. We connect you with brothers or sisters who have been where you've been. So when you when you see someone who has been where you've been and you see them make it or be successful or 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 improve, it helps you to understand that I can do it. I think, Brother Ben, you said one time. Don't hide the struggles. Don't hide your imperfections. Don't hide your falls when you come in or you fall. Don't hide that. People need to see that because just seeing the end result is not enough. You know, they need to see the whole process. I always think that the process is the most important thing, not the beginning, not the end, but the process, because the process is what helps people to see that, oh, I can do this. I also like when Brother Nuri Chang, he said God fidence instead of confidence. And what that means, God fidence, to understand that, what that means, you know. Also, when he said um, education, I believe he said is one fourth knowledge and three fourths encouragement. That's so important because that lets you know that anybody, we can all do anything and everything if we're encouraged. So I think that's very important. I heard a sister also say, accomplishments improves confidence. When you are, when you accomplish and you see success, <clears throat> or you see, like they say, those images that children get and they see those images of themselves, that will then that improves your confidence. So I think just being real, being honest, presenting the information, letting people know that I've done it, I failed, and I was able to be successful. I think that matters so much more than the image that you see at the end, you know. So anyway, that was my take on it. Thank you for letting me speak. Yes, ma'am. Up next, we have Sister Randisha. Assalamu alaikum. Yes, sir. So, um, it was a few things that stood out to me. So, when Brother Nori was talking about, you know, that, and to veggie back off of Sister Yolanda, is um, when Nick asks, you know, how can one join the Nation of Islam? And he said, you know, you could come as you are, but you can't stay as you are. Um, I just always think about the process and why we call it the processing class, you know, um, is anything in the process is never going to stay the same. That's just like a baby, right? We go through nine months of pregnancy or actually 10, but that baby is brought in trimesters or phases. So um, that was one of the things that stood out to me. And then when he said that, you know, we be religious gangbanging. Um, you know, we always, you know, because I'm a Christian or I'm this or I'm that and instead of us coming together. And when he mentioned, you know, just about intelligence, you know, if a Christian and a Muslim was trying to help the brother and one rope was um, one's rope was shorter, you know, he hoped that they would have common sense. But sometimes common sense ain't so common, you know, um, as we all know, but to tie the rope together so that they could save the brother. And and that really, really stood out to me because sometimes we, you know, we're a Christian. Oh, yeah, because I can't. And sometimes we're just too self-righteous. I was um, actually, me and my husband was talking about this last night. Sometimes we're too super Muslim. Sometimes we're too super self-righteous Muslim where we don't go out and we don't want to talk to the people, right? Like we never came from, you know, the hood or something like that. Like we think because we have a bow tie or a headpiece on, some of us think that we've made it. But really, really making it is going out to help one of our brothers or our sisters, you know, fishing. That's very important. And um, the last thing was when Brother Nori was, um, you know, when Nick, Nick said, um, you know, so, you know, you can't have white woman or pork. 
or whatever. You know, they're everybody is trying to listen to the everybody is definitely trying to listen to the minister. Um, and they're listening to his student ministers through him who have gained enough knowledge to go out there on his behalf and on their behalf to go out there to talk to the people. Um, the the youth is listening. Kendrick Lamar, I, I mean J. Cole and all every all of these rappers are listening to the minister. So we don't want to take these things lightly. We want to make sure that we're listening, that we're being obedient. So assalamu alaikum, that was all. Walaikum salam. As you was talking, you made me think of a clip. Yeah, you made me think of a clip. And here is the clip. Is Elijah Muhammad said to me, brother, it's going to take more than preaching to change our people. I'll preach as long as he allows me to preach, but soon he's going to shut my mouth. And God help you when you don't hear my voice no more. I'm saying this to all of you because many of us are going to die under the chastisement of God because we know the truth and won't tell the truth, won't go to our people and seek to save them. We think that eating a bowl of bean soup and looking good and pretty is enough. Hell no. If you're not willing to sacrifice to get our people up out of the condition that they're in, then you're worthy for the chastisement of God. And that's on the way. <laughs> oh, boy, I love boy being able to have them just clips on deck, man. I mean, ooh, just follow up right by ha. So, yeah, man, that's just a reminder. Good reminder for us all, man. It ain't about just looking good now, having the suit and bow tie on. Yeah, what we're going to go out there and do. What gives us value is lifting them up. That's what gives us the value. That's what gives us the value. Sister Dr. T. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. Good. So, Brother Nuri uh, spoke so many uh, things uh, just in that small conversation with uh, Nick Cannon uh, is just mind blowing. Um, I love to hear him speak and everything, but when he talked about um, those coming into the nation and becoming members, um, you come as you are, and that's the same, you know, preaching that they do about Christianity. You come as you are. But you can't leave, you can't, you know, continue to be the same person that you stepped in the door at. And so that's the difference that I can definitely point out in terms of the nation of Islam and Baptist church, uh, Pentec whatever Christianity churches that black folks continue to walk in. There's no changes. There's no expectation for you to change. You know, you come in thinking you're going to get a miracle. You're not going to get a miracle. All you're going to get is a bunch of noise in your ear that you ain't going to learn nothing from. And then you return back to your, your, your homes, your old ways, your life, whatever you started when you came in. You returning back to those things and nothing, um, nothing that you went in to make sense of your life. Um, has changed your life when you leave out of those doors. So that's definitely um, one of the things that connects to also when he said that when new members come in, they connect them with those who've been in their shoes and who has changed for change for the better good so they can see it. And, and that goes back to generations what's happening in the, in the, in the, in the black communities and so forth is that we are not preparing our children for the sins and the, and the, and the bad things and all the wrong things that we have committed. We're not preparing the next generation to do better. I hear so many times, you know, today, mothers and grandmothers today is like 30 years old. How is that possible? 20 years old, 29 years old. How is, how is that possible? You a grandmother. 
you know. So what time did you have to raise this child? Or how, when did you raise? You know, it's just mind blowing uh, the way things is going right now in the black communities all over America. It, it just absurd how how uh, generations after generations is not holding generations accountable. And that's what I wanted to say. Yes, ma'am. Sister Sherelle. Sherelle? Sister Sherelle. All right. Well, we're going to go ahead and close. It is 8 o'clock at this time. Um, thank everybody for tuning in. Uh, again, I apologize this morning. I thought I changed it to seven last night, but it didn't change. So it was an hour late according to what the app was saying, but I'll make sure that I got it up as soon as possible today, uh, or tonight. Uh, somebody said, brother Ben, point out the rest of the verse Hosea four and six, because they rejected the knowledge. Yeah, they rejected the knowledge. We were destroyed from a lack of knowledge, but because they rejected the knowledge. Many of us have gotten the knowledge and we have received it in some shape or form, but we have been rejecting it or rejecting ourselves, really. So thank you all for listening. Uh, again, I'll see you guys tomorrow. If you guys are watching on YouTube or Facebook or anything, you guys can actually join right now the private community by going to www.thepowercall.net. www.thepowercall.net. Again, www.thepowercall.net. Uh, if you want to learn a little bit more about what we're building with the community, building with the families, we do have the three partner vettings inside of there as well just type in bwo vet and you'll see it um so we did just a uh yeah we did a few people forgot i'm not giving y'all publicly the names yet if you want to find out who's going to be teaching and who's going to help be coaching the movement you can join the power call free www.thepowercall.net bwf is i i, didn't, I said oh bwf I'm sorry, BWF, Building Wealthy Families, if I said the other name. Uh, we have had uh, allowed the students to ask questions, vet them, get an understanding, get an understanding of the background, X, Y, and Z. And they have been three wonderful, great uh, videos. So please make sure y'all go check out those replays inside of the Power Call as well. All right, y'all. Peace and have a black-tastic day. Brother Ben here. Brother Ben. Now Ben got a heck of a program. A lot of people listening to Brother Ben. And Ben tells them about the minister. And Ben tells them about the minister.